Alright guys, Tetscribber here, back again today, and I'm not sure which day this is going to go up yet, because I'm trying to figure out exactly how the uploads are going to go over CDBR London right here, because on Tuesday I did the rated interview, if you haven't seen that yet, uh, I'd greatly appreciate you check it out, it was a very good one I thought, and let me know any feedback and stuff for the future, who I should do after CDBR London, all this good stuff. The next couple of days I'm not exactly sure how it's going on because I've realised that on London starts on Friday at like 1pm which means that how am I going to do an upload on Friday unless it is a recap of Friday but that's going to be a little bit problematic because you know the, the event might finish at 10.30 in the evening, might go out for drinks or something by the time I get back and record the video it's very late. I'm not sure how good the hotel's internet is, so, you know, it's a lot of questions, and I wouldn't be able to upload the Friday recap until early in Saturday morning, so I don't exactly know what I'm going to do for Friday's video, maybe this will end up going up, like, early on Friday before the event starts, maybe I'll just have to chalk up Friday and say, okay, well... You know, I did my best and I'll just do the recaps on Saturday morning or because I don't want to do because typically I do the recaps the morning after I wake up. But the problem is for a UK event, by the time the video goes live, it's probably only two hours before the next round begins. So I really have to do it on the night. I don't know. I'll figure something out. So there's just some thoughts on that. I don't know when this video is going to go live. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a video on the top five players to watch at this event. Now, I'll probably, you know, there's a lot of honorable mentions here that we can talk about. But yeah, top five players at CWL London. These are the pools. We've done a, a lot of things to, well, we've done a lot of content on the pools itself. Haven't really talked too much about the individual players. So let's crack on with that. Here we have all the participants of the event, so 100 Thieves all the way through. These are the names that we're looking for. And um, yeah, so like if you guys enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Closing in on 11,000 as of the time of recording. And my first one's going to be Priester because um, 100 Thieves and CWBL Fort Worth were an interesting array of teams. I think I might do another video on, on the favourites for the London, which I may have already done where this video goes live. I don't really know. I was going to talk about the fact that 100 Thieves are considered favourites for this event, but it's very interesting because, yes, of course, they did very well at CDBR Fort Worth. They made that loser's bracket run, but, you know, they didn't make it to the final or anything, so why exactly are they considered favourites? Now, of course, Priester at that event, when they were going on their loser's bracket run, was taken ill, and Pharaoh had to substitute in for him. And in general, Priester hasn't been performing quite the level we've seen from him when he first joined the team. That's probably not a bad thing, considering that 100 Thieves have been doing incredibly well anyway, even with Priester slightly dropping off the ball a little bit, largely because, you know, Slash of Octane and Kenny have all stepped it up big time. Maybe those are one and the same you know, correlation. You know, Priester can't play incredibly well or in terms of statistics when the other guys are also doing very well. That's definitely a possibility, but I feel like maybe his individual game has dropped off you know, at least slightly from what we were seeing when he first joined 100 Thieves and was an absolute monster. So I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on Priester this weekend because, you know, he's a guy that if he turns up for 100 Thieves as he has in the past and starts dropping 40 bombs and the like, this team is going to be even more deadly than it already is. And of course, he's had this you know, sickness and illness at CWL Fort Worth. How exactly is him and the team going to recover from that? Can they put it all together again nicely like they did? Well, they did it in the Pro League after Fort Worth and they had a fantastic week. So definitely very likely that they can but definitely he's a player to keep your eyes on incredibly talented and likely it is he will turn things around so we have Bance as my second pick here on this Denial squad I wanted to talk about Denial a very interesting team right now and as Rated said in that interview you know the roles on this team have now changed Bance was using the Maddox on the Red Reserve squad because well when they played with Zero and Scraps on the Maddoxes it was just too slow so they had to use Bance now he's on this SMG role which he's wanted to be on for well the entire season so he finally gets his opportunity of course this is CDBL London last year at the UK event he was one of the standout performers at CDBL Birmingham a lot of people would put that down to the Iyama monitors we had at the event Bounce was the Iyama Friar and uh, was absolutely going off at Birmingham last year maybe that's not too much to do with the Iyamas maybe it's to do with I don't know the home crowd or something like that that maybe Bounce really reacts to but of course He's back on this role that he's wanted to be on, that he was really good on back in the Black Ops 3 days, for example. Hasn't been so good so far this season. I think this team does rely on him a fair bit. Joe and Rated have been honestly, well, you know, Joe has been pretty damn good this season. Rated's always a pretty damn consistent assault rifle. Alex and Brack, of course, you could say like Alex, of course, been out of the game for a while since Vegas. He could definitely... 
be a player to watch here for sure. But my money's on Bance for really to make or break this team. If he has a really good weekend, Denial can go very far in this tournament. Of course, that does rely on them getting out a very difficult group with Luminosity, Spice, and Gen G. But maybe we'll get onto that in a second here with some other players that we talk about. So yeah, Bance is definitely a man to keep your eyes on. Third up, I'm going to go with Apathy on this Evil Geniuses squad in a similar vein. Just been removed from Team Envious. They decided to get Decimate and Ferro into that team instead. Apathy going on to Evil Geniuses, of course, legendary player in the scene, made the last three World Championship Grand Finals. He's been superb for a number of years but this season has probably I would say been his worst start to the season in a long time Envy have not played well you know usually early season he is at least like a decent but honestly Apathy has been pretty below average I would say like you know when players do really well you say oh they're unreal and then when players do not so well you say they're average but in all honesty an average player is pretty damn good and Apathy has not been up to that standard, I don't think, so far this season. Maybe that's to do with the way the role dynamics worked on that envious squad. Possibly. And we'll have to see how it works here on Evil Geniuses. Yes, maybe CDBL London is a little bit too early to be focusing on Apathy. Maybe you're talking maybe, you know, Anaheim Champs, Apathy's going to come into his own. You could say a similar thing about John. But of course, considering Envy versus Evil Geniuses is a match in pool play, very exciting indeed to see how these guys will match up, how Apathy will play against his former squad that have decided to get rid of him. Maybe you can, you know, prove that he's the worth much more than what Envy thought of him at the time and can show that he really can turn it around than what he's produced in the first half of the season. So Abadi is definitely a guy to keep your eyes on in a similar vein to Bance really. Not in terms of he's changed his role even though I think I think he actually has changed his role. There was a video he did talking about yeah he uh, how he's like changed his role now. So definitely a player to keep your eyes on. Next up we have Scump on Opta Gaming. I wanted to bring this guy up. There's definitely some honorable mentions we can talk about here which we'll go into in a second but I wanted to look at Scump because a lot of people have been talking about Opta Gaming coming into this event. They came top 12 at Fort Worth, very poor. If they do badly at this event, what is the expectation for where these players are going to go? Of course, you're not going to get rid of Dashi, you know, Crim6, Karma, you know, they've been playing very well. The interesting part is, of course, Scump is never going to get dropped off this team, I would say. You know, he's the face of Optic. Even if he does horribly, it's very unlikely that he's going to get dropped. I think that TJ really is... If Optic do perform badly, TJ is definitely the player that has the most likelihood of getting removed off the team just in terms of name value alone. But of course, if Scumps keeps not performing spectacularly, he's been pretty good on and off this season. On his day, of course, Scump could be an absolute monster. We've seen it from him a long time in the past. But so far this season, he hasn't been as good as he has been in previous years. If he keeps, you know, if he doesn't perform well this event, is there a chance that towards the end of the year, he, you know, considers retirement from the game? I don't think there's any chance he gets dropped, even if he performs horribly. But maybe that's something that starts to resonate in his mind. But, you know, we'll have to see how it goes, of course. He's definitely a player to watch this tournament. If Skump goes off, Optic have a fantastic chance of winning the event. Hasn't happened too much so far this season. And from a player that was, you know, considered the best player in the world back in, well, Black Ops 3, uh, Advanced Warfare for sure. And at times in Infinite Warfare, he was superb towards the end as well. So maybe we'll see a similar thing here from Skump this event. It's going to be interesting. Such a big name player. So yeah, definitely a guy to keep your eyes on here on Optic Gaming. As I said, he's the leading the SMG lineup there with TJ Hatt. If they have a really great performance, this team is unbelievable with Dashi being as good as he is and Crimsix being very good in the ICR role. And of course, Karma always taken over when Dashi, you know, has a, has a little bit of a more mediocre map by his standards. So that's my fourth player to watch. And finally, I'm looking at Decimate from Team Envy. You can say this about a fair few of these players. I guess Alex is also another one where who, the guys who have played, you know, the Pro League qualifier, they've played at Vegas, played very, very well. Now they've finally got their chance back on a Pro League team how are they going to perform I saw a fair few people in the comment section when I talked about Envy saying how you know I'm not sold on Decimate which is certainly a fair opinion last season he was generally good I thought but did have a couple of mistakes he made particularly at champs even though that team Envy roster did relatively well at champs overall so far this season he has been very good of course now he's on Envious here now yeah he is reunited with Ferro and Bevels that he has played with in in the past so you know, I do think they have a lot of potential as a squad I think the Decimate is a fantastic player overall but uh, we'll have to see how he performs here because he was great at Vegas you know, it's the kind of thing that uh, Rated was talking about on Tuesday he was saying that you know, you know players are picked up based on their performance early in the season happened with Alex happened with Dylan and the same thing really has happened with Decimate but because he hasn't played in many months at this point at this high tier professional level 
what sort of performances are we going to see here out of Decimate, especially when he's surrounded with such strong talents as Who Cake, Silly and Ferro. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Envy is going to play out. Decimate's another player to watch for me. Tough pool they've got, of course, of Phasey, United and Evil Geniuses. And let's have a look at a few honourable mentions I wanted to bring up here. So could also mention Zuma, I wanted to say, on Face Clan. in addition to this. The reason why I circled Arcetes here is just because he hasn't been the same player that we've seen from him earlier on in the year. At Vegas, he was the second best player after Dashi statistically, and he was also doing it without the Tempest, which is unreal at that event. So, yeah, he was fantastic early on in the year. Now they do have this SMG duo of Abizi and Simp, which is incredible. But even before Simp joined the team, Arcetes was not playing at the same level, at least statistically, as he was before. And I think he'd probably attest to that himself. He was really was the hard carry for E United early on in this title. Maybe you can say that as the game progresses, SMGs become more viable as the year goes on and more used. Yeah, maybe RCTs you know, as a result of that, he's had to change his playstyle to some degree and isn't putting up the same numbers as a result. But still a guy to keep your eyes on because if Arzadis can turn it around and drop a 1.2 like he did, well, I think he had like a 1.4 uh, Vegas or something ridiculous. If he can put up big numbers, he's been hovering around a 1 recently in the Pro League and at Fort Worth and the like. If he can really turn it around, E United are even scarier than they already are. Face Clan as well, Zuma, a guy we haven't seen too much of this year so far. Back in this SMG duo, him and Asim, I guess Asim you can keep your eyes on as well. Zero is a guy I wanted to circle on phase though, just because of this role change. Zero used the ICR back in the Infinite Warfare days when he was on the Splice team that won at Stage 1 playoffs. He was unbelievable with the ice with the uh, NV4 in hand, of course it was at the time. Had like a 1.3 at that event, so now he's back on that role. It says it's been going very well in practice. There's a lot of names to keep your eyes on on this. Face Clan squad, but Zero is going to be an interesting one because him in the ICR role should be very exciting indeed. Another name to mention is Ferro on that Team Envious squad. People saying a similar thing with Decimate and Ferro, you know, not 100% sure if I really believe they can go the distance and really perform at the level we've seen before. I do rate Ferro as an individual player, it's just about how he gets on with his team. I think he was fantastic last year. I would have given him the MVP at Stage 2 playoffs when they won that event. Kenny got the MVP, but, you know, he didn't play that well at that weekend, but he was the MVP for the entire season. That's how they did it, so... It's going to be interesting to see these guys in action. Of course, several guys to keep your eyes on elsewhere. Splice, Accuracy, a guy that hasn't been playing incredibly well. Assault's now on the bench at Evil Dad. At Envy, of course, he maybe is uh, keeping his eyes on this Splice team, thinking, well, maybe Splice are looking for an upgrade for Accuracy, which apparently they have been considering earlier in the season here. Also, Luminosity, I guess you've got to mention a guy like Gunless, you know. Always keep your eyes on him if you want some spectacular gameplay. Slackton John as well. It's getting towards the latter half of the year here. John probably going to start turning around his game and performing really, really well. That's what we've seen from him in the past. Of course, Slackton was a you know really important player for them at Fort Worth. And Classic, of course, is, is another one to, to consider here because he was using the Rampart, which is now not in the game. But the KN57 may well be. So it'll be interesting to see what Classic exactly uses in that aspect right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, yeah, leave all your thoughts below. Who are you keeping your eyes on this weekend? Hope you enjoy the weekend of Call of Duty. It should be a fantastic one. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always, and I will see you next time.